Good afternoon and welcome to The Upside. I'm Jonathan Oleski with Jaymore, and this is our virtual show brought to you by the Associated Jewish Federation of Baltimore and Jaymore during this time of uncertainty with the goal of keeping Jewish Baltimore informed. So if you would like to ask today's guests, and we have three wonderful guests today, any questions during our show, please type them into the Zoom chat or message us via Jaymore's Facebook page. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our two wonderful hosts, Beth Goldsmith, Chair of the Associated Jewish Federation of Baltimore, and Dr. Scott Rifkin, publisher of JMOR. Beth and Scott, take it away. Thanks, Jonathan, and welcome again, everyone. This year, the culinary scene faced unprecedented challenges. Those restaurants who survived were able to make ends meet through outdoor dining, curbside pickup, and limited indoor seating. At the same time, many caterers saw their sales plummet and only small outdoor weddings and other similar events helped them withstand these challenging times. And now as winter approaches, what's in store for the restaurant and catering businesses? How can they adapt to colder, sorry, to colder temperatures and what are their plans for the future? Um, Jonathan, I think you're gonna introduce the guests. Yep, I'll jump right in while we're waiting for Scott to join us, must be coming from another meeting. So today I wanna introduce our two, our three wonderful guests. We have Charles Levine of Citron, Monroe Zeffert of Zeffert and Gold Catering and Celebrations Kosher Catering, and Aaron Magden of Mikey and Mel's Deli in Fulton in Howard County. Um, Beth, do you want to go ahead and, and start the questions? Sure. And um, I'm not sure how we'll do this. Some questions might seem more relevant to one or another of you guys, but if not, please just uh, ha let's have a civilized conversation. I may not direct a question specifically to you. I'm going to start with how each of you um, had to change your business model to survive when the pandemic hit. So um, Monroe, you're the first person on my screen. Why don't I start with you and then we'll let the other guys chime in. I can tell you we were uh, surprised in March with what we had to do. Uh, we, am, I'm afraid, immediately laid off most of our staff. And these are folks that some of whom have worked for me for over 20 years. Um, we attempted first to pivot and uh, post menus online and send that information to our mailing list. Um, that was not remarkably successful for us. It did well on Mother's Day and on Memorial Day and on uh, Fourth of July, but we are not a restaurant that can take a call at four o'clock and deliver a meal at five. So th that didn't really work for us. Uh, we mainly, uh, started doing events that were smaller. And as you said, we did events that were outside uh, frequently. Um, we also developed a, a group of alternatives to traditional catering. We have been packaging meals for businesses to give to their employees, uh, beautifully done two person packages in a nice labeled bag with heating instructions for nice entrees and side dishes and appetizers and desserts uh, when they normally would have done a party. We're hoping to do a lot of that in December. Uh, we have done that for a few uh, fundraisers for nonprofits and that fits in well when they can't get a gathering of many hundreds they can have every, every guest who would normally pay to attend an event receive a two-person bag for dinner. But we are trying. Um, it's awful for our employees, there's no doubt. Thanks, Monroe. Aaron, do you wanna chime in? Yeah, we were in a little bit of a different situation. So we, we had just uh, started construction uh, right before the pandemic, right? So this is in the point where we decided to move forward with the project. And uh, I own a handful of other restaurants, but I'm sort of a silent owner. And this was our first sort of project where I was gonna be a little bit more hands-on. So this is the point where the, the, you know, the whole Corona was sort of like, uh, well, it's here, but it's over in China right now. And it's not that big of a deal here. 
so we proceeded with the project. So the first thing was, was dealing with COVID during the construction phase, right? So we had to deal with all the contractors and, uh, you know, people sort of couldn't be on top of each other. And, you know, the, the uh, labor was very challenging. So that was like the first part of, of everything that really uh, threw a curveball at us. And then, you know, once we opened, it's like we didn't know what we didn't know because, you know, we're in a situation where we're just opening and uh, we've never obviously experienced this, uh, the whole social distancing and all this in a, in a, in a restaurant environment um, as entrepreneurs. And uh, it's been pretty crazy because we had, everyone was like, you know, we were supposed to open in July, then it got to August. That's then, you know, we opened in September and there was so much hype because everyone in Howard County wanted an authentic Jewish deli. And it's like been like 20 years, you know, in, in like sort of the making because no, there was a place in like Olney that had uh, like a real Jewish deli. And ever since like then, everyone's been wanting this place. So this is sort of a passion project for my brother and I. Um, and lines were out the door. It was funny. Um, I was driving in for the first day. It was like 5.30 in the morning. And I called my brother. I'm like, hey, man, listen, it, it, there's a line around, around the building. And I was joking because it was like 6 a.m., right? I was like, no one's going to be there right now. And lo and behold, I got there. And literally, people were around the building waiting for corned beef sandwiches. So... But the, but the problem was, and obviously it was a good problem, it's different than probably other people was, you know, we had to, you know, we wanted to let all these people in, but the whole social distancing thing was like, you know, a whole cluster. So we're trying to balance this huge crowd and then, you know, the social distancing and people started getting all upset. So it was pretty sort of a, a wild situation. Well, I'm glad for you that at least it was a wild situation that I, it, I think you can figure that out better than, than the, the door with no faces on the other side. Right. Charles, I haven't seen you and I miss you. Tell us what's going on at Citron. Well, it's safe. You could come here. Um, first of all, thanks for having us. Susan says hi. Um, Monroe, it's great to see you. I miss my buddy and it's nice to meet you as, as well. Um, look, for us, um, the beginning was like everybody in business, what's going on? And then how do we contain this? How do we take care of our employees? Stepping back, actually enjoying being home a little bit at night. Can you hear me? All right, by the way. Yep. Okay. Um, and then because, especially I know Monroe and other people in our industry for you know decades now, we were best suited, and I was best suited, for this major project because it's no different than finding a multi-level building and we're catering these monstrosity events and there's all these elements going on and we're juggling them at the same time with other kind of things. So I, I took on the project of, we got it. Once we got mentally to a certain place, we got this. And so whether it was the financial assistance from PPP, which was a band-aid for our industry, um, and all of a sudden, so what are we gonna do? Well, the most important thing is safety, obviously. And who would have known that our almost 16 HVAC systems were pristinely set up with our filtration system, the way we did it, and our scrubbing, and all of a sudden, what was, what was missing was just the solution. And the solution is we found through Smith Mechanical a UV product, a nano product that is, first of all, makes everybody happy because it is, um, it is environmentally friendly, it's ozone and mercury free. But more important, there's three solutions that you need for this process. One's UV, one's ionization, and one is scrubbing. And believe it or not, in all of our multiple HVAC systems that are independent in every room, that already went up straight, that already were scrubbed, now has that process. We put in the new MER filters and there's not a mechanical engineer, an architect or anybody in this industry that's gonna tell you anything other than there's nothing else that we can do. You're now 99.95% clean of all allergens, 
viruses, bacterial, and molds. But as we all know in our industry, in any business, it's not what we think. It's perception, it's reality. So we looked at a bigger picture. Obviously, having the lake in the summer was easy. We already had that outside structure. We already had a lot of things in place. At the same token, we had a core of employees that we that came back. We had a new core that we interviewed. We went through tremendous COVID training and recently something else again. And we've now in five months have learned how to do it. Um, it's everything, everything down to the battery in the, in the hand-free sinks. I personally had to learn and then learn how do you as an entrepreneur deal with um, still being creative, still being individualized, and then motivating and running a big team? To be honest with you, we're up. We're up tremendously in business. It's because it's a great staff. It's a great environment. No, the all-premise catering is zero. And I'm not going out, honestly, until there is an environment set that is as safe as Citron. So there's a difference. Yes, we've experienced, like you know, some small things, and there have been weddings from 7 to 30 to 80. It's been a 100-person party. But remember, we're big. We're spread out. We now have a 2,000-square-foot structure tent in between the cove, which is our event space, and the restaurant. Um, there is heat there. So now we're going to come into the season when somebody says, I want to be outside, and we're very clear, you know, that and we've spent a lot of time with people finding out their comfort level, where they want to sit, where they want to be. But the outside at Citron in the winter is not outside. The outside is under heat. Somebody wants to be safe, they should be in that building. Um, as far as the rest of it, you know, look, I decided, you know, that, and we've decided, my wife and I, uh, Susan, that we're not going to get ahead just because we're big, we're spread out. We have HVAC systems that are fabulous. No, we're not going to lap other situations or other businesses because we just are set up a certain way. We want to, we want to keep going. And so we are elevating ourselves. And that when you're back, the food's tighter, the staff is stronger. Um, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to jump in, Sean, because I want to, I want to hear some more about, no, that's okay. I, I mean, and, and your oh. view, of course, hasn't hurt. But um, I want to hear some more about um, employees. Everyone just about mentioned them. Although, Aaron, I'm going to get back to you to find out who Mikey and Mel actually are. But um, in terms of employees, I know this was horrific. Monroe, you started the conversation by saying, you know, you had to let your staff go. So now, as things are slightly reopened, maybe even more so, are there enough employees out there? enough people willing to come back? Are you finding enough employees? Are there still plenty of people laid off? Um, how is this impacting the restaurant business for non-owners, I should say? Monroe, you wanna start again, please? With our catering business, we are still a little bit less than half of our full-timers back. We only had two staff that we invited to come back who were afraid, meaning for health reasons. Um, so almost everyone did come back that we invited to come back. Uh, they're not getting as many hours as they may have uh, in better times. Um, the federal government is not helping with uh, unemployment so minimal right now. Uh, they actually made it very challenging when the feds were adding 600 to any states, well, for our states, 430 a week. What, you, when... Uh, they were getting unemployment at the beginning. They were getting over $1,000 a week. They were okay. Not as much as they may have earned regular working, but they were okay. When that extra was lost, it became very challenging. Put a little pressure on us, which we could not really respond to. Um, it didn't change our need for extra staff. We have gradually added people back. We've had a good September and October. We are unsure what December looks like, and we are scared of what January and February looks like. Aaron, you wanna, do you have a bunch of employees? I don't know how big you are, haven't ever been. We have about 40 employees. Uh, labor has been extremely hard to get. Qualified labor, let me say. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, it, it's, 
either get like these high school kids or the, or the college kids that are doing virtual or just it's it's just very hard to get good qualified labor especially in this deli business because it's like a niche business you know to, to get deli people if you will it's just a it's just a different type of business so you know between deli people and bakers you know it's definitely it's definitely been a, a bit of a challenge and charles do you have most of your staff back yes um, but I have to agree, it is, it is a challenge. Our kitchen is extremely tight. Um, Chef has done a wonderful job in this process of re-examining the business. We all have learned um, priorities. And I mean, obviously the most important asset is our employees, the guest experience. So yeah, I mean, we're going through a lot of training. We just finished um, a COVID training program with Richard Friedman, who has just started a major corporation and um, it was very, very, the staff asked a lot of good questions. We've gotten some good answers. Um, it is hard, it is hard. Um, we, one of our senior waiters, um, Henry, who a number of people love, he, it took him almost two months to come back. He spent five minutes one day and he was scared, he left. And then it kept growing gradual. Believe me, their safety is wonderful. Um, you know. I don't think that the next four months for the industry and for the world is going to be the next six months or five months are going to be as good as the last four. Um, we think there's a baseline for us. We see pent up demand, um, but it is hard getting employees. Um, it's a hard industry anyway. And so that's why we've done some things different. We have, you know, instituted an automatic service charge for all of our, since we reopened, so our staff, we could say to our staff, you're going to make money. But in terms of that, what we're holding them to and the training they're going for, some have made it and some can't because the level, someone is going to get be paid this kind of money, then they really have to earn it. And so we are actually elevating ourselves and further, but it is hard finding professional surfers. And so that's taking that taking that one step further, yeah. and um, I'm going to start with Aaron this time. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the industry in general. So you know how much how many wait staff are out there, bartenders, et cetera, looking and and to talk about some of the other restaurants. Aaron, I said I'm going to stop with you, start with you because I really don't know the Howard County scene. So maybe you have a good vibe for us about how things are going there with other restaurants? Well, <clears throat> fortunately, we have uh, the Howard County scene is pretty strong. And the reason why that is, is because, you know, when Baltimore shut down and it was basically, you know, only outdoor seating and such, Howard County was still outdoor, outdoor and indoor. So everyone started coming to um, Howard County, you know, for dining. And I own other restaurants in, in Howard County and we were like, we were extremely fortunate to, to really, uh, you know, boost sales and things were going, you know, really well. And like I said, at the deli, things are, you know, going, you know, really well, you know, as well. But, but the labor has definitely been a challenge and, you know, people come in uh, and they're very skeptical and they watch every move you make and you better have the mask at a certain level and you better have the gloves at, gloves on and they're watching every little nook and cranny that you do. And when you make one wrong move, you know, they're so quick to get online for a social review, which, you know, which is very challenging because those social reviews will make or break you. And for, you know, let's just say I took my last nickel and this was my, 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 own, my only restaurant. I took my last nickel and this is what I opened. I mean, you could put someone out of business when you put all these negative reviews on when you're just trying to really start up a, you know, you know, a, a restaurant. So that that's, you know, it gets it gets really challenging, but it's a it's a tough the service industry is a tough business. And I just open this as like a passion project. I, I own I, I, like I put in a bio, I own Window Nation, which is I started 14 years ago, which is like my main business. And I was like, I'm going to start this passion project, which I'll tell you about Mikey and Mel. Um, and I just, this, this industry is very tough. So Monroe and Charles, 
I know that you guys have been in this way longer than I have, and wow. Yeah, wow. Oh. Wow, exactly. Monroe, talk to us a little about, you know, the other, I, I mean, I know Charles and, and you have worked together in the past, and um, I'm sure you know lots of other people, uh, whether they own a restaurant or are catering. What's the vibe? How are others faring? Well, we know that some uh, other caterers and uh, rental companies have closed. That, uh, that we know. Um, I can tell you on the service end, we're, our staff, we, we haven't added anybody new. We've only been calling back our regulars and using our part-timers. Um, it hurt to see a, a good friend in the Jewish community close his rental business. It hurt to see uh, Alan Weiss close up again. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's tough for all of us. I do communicate with other caterers. Um, we work with uh, as tight a staff as possible, yes. Although I will tell you when we run an event, it actually takes more staff now per capita than it used to because we can't have anything self-served. We have to be serving every product, even if it would normally have been a self-serve buffet. We purchased some plexiglass barriers for buffets. We purchased plexiglass lids for chafing dishes that are closed on the guest side and open towards my server. Um, we, uh, we have to invest the labor in the events, yes. Um, there is some pushback from hosts about uh, pricing for events when they become smaller guest counts, which would normally result in a higher per person charge. Uh, that can be offensive. Um, and of course, we're here trying to keep our businesses going and our employees covered. What we haven't addressed were our postponements, which has been a remarkable uh, pr project since March. We have rescheduled an enormous amount of events. Um, we offer 100% credit on any deposit paid when it's applied to a future date. Um, and usually that is sufficient. Um, there are children whose bar mitzvahs have been postponed now twice, who then respond that they are not interested in doing it when they're gonna be 14. And that's interesting. It, it re really interesting that you say that. Um, I have a very dear friend and her granddaughter actually had the bat mitzvah just with the family, but we're all invited to the event. The party is what got poned, postponed for the year. And I think she's still really looking forward to celebrating. I know all of her family and friends certainly are. So hopefully that will happen this spring since it couldn't happen last spring. Um, you, you mentioned it's very interesting to me about, because I was assuming there couldn't be a buffet. I was assuming you couldn't have past hors d'oeuvres because people could touch things. Would you go a little deeper? And so how does something like a buffet setup work now? We are doing past hors d'oeuvres, yes. And the server glove hand does present the product. Um, we're doing buffets, and I'll just tell you as an aside, the state of Maryland doesn't use the term buffet. They, when I originally communicated with the governor's office, he sent me to the, to the Secretary of Commerce, and the response was there could be no buffets. And I tried to describe that we're serving, no guest is touching a serving piece, nobody's sharing anything. And they said, oh, that is cafeteria style. So, and believe me, there is no caterer it's, it's, in this it state. Sounds, it, but it sounds so basic. There is no caterer in the state who says they do cafeteria, okay? Oh, right. But according to the state, it's cafeteria style when we are truly serving each guest. So yes, we've bought the right equipment of shields for the cold products and chafing dish lids. Uh, we actually developed the system and it took a few events to work it out. A guest, is greeted by one of our staff at the beginning of the buffet. She doesn't get the plate, our server gets the plate and walks the guest through all the products on the buffet, taking what the guest wants and putting it on the plate and handing it to the guest at the end of the line. And of course the next guest gets one more of our server. So we are rolling several servers as the guests approach the buffet. Cool, uh, Charles, you're doing 
you're doing events. Are you doing cafeteria style and past hors d'oeuvres? No, past hors d'oeuvres, yes. First of all, I just don't want to forget, congratulations, Aaron. Citron was a passion for me. And that's why I did Citron. And I'm happy that we did. Um, no, we're passing hors d'oeuvres. And if somebody wants a cocktail party, what we will do is, first of all, you know, yes, we can have clusters of high top tables. Yes, we can have lounge furniture. We've got to spread it. Obviously, we're more than the distance that we need. We have to feel the level. It's all about the comfort of the guests and, and their friends and whoever's coming. We are, um, if somebody wants to stay with a cocktail party, which we're trying to deter, the only thing we can do is a tapas plate, a course or so that we can serve like that. But no, there's no buffet because our interpretation is a little bit different than, a, than, than Monroe's. Ours is that um, we just don't want people near the food. And so we're not going to go there. We don't really want to complicate that. Um, what, getting back to everything that you're saying, um, what I, I guess what I would add is for us, there's a, been a tremendous amount of new clients. And so we've, we've been able to, we're not in a, we're not a saturated business yet at Citron. We are now getting more bar and bar mitzvahs. We have been doing smaller weddings. And what I've told people is look, um, when you have a wedding of 120 people and everybody took a minute to speak to you, it'd be two hours. So it can't happen. When you have a party or a wedding of 30 people, you're not going to miss an inference. You're not going to miss an expression. You're not going to miss it. They are understanding, the ones that can get it, they're understanding that these are special. And someday, maybe they'll have a fifth anniversary party, a tenth, a baby something. They'll do something else. But we are, so if you can pull off if you can just, it's not Zen-like, but in essence, if somebody can forget the environment and you can touch it in a way they've never been touched, it's gotta to be much more elevated than it ever was, then they remark and they know, of course we take temperatures. There's a reason why you can only make a reservation at Citron unless we know somebody like Beth or Monroe or Aaron, you have to put a credit card down um, or we won't take the reservation. We tell everyone you've got to come on time and we will not see people past a certain point. So we've got to control the movement of people here. But ultimately, if they're going to come and they want to have a dinner or two or, or a business meeting or whatever, they have to forget for the, for the time that they're here, that they're in this environment. And so that's why there's so many things in the future that we're going to do that are beyond what we ever did. And that's really where it is for us. Um, but we're very fortunate. I, 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 no, I, I, like, I like when we're talking about postponements and, yes. and celebrating fifth anniversaries. I had a big birthday in March and um, I made myself a rack of lamb and bought myself a birthday cake with a seven and a zero. So I had my 70th birthday in my condo my son happened to be stuck there with me for several months. So at least I had someone, but I just figure I'm going to be 70 forever now until I can have my big celebration. So I'm recommending that to anyone who wants to celebrate forever, um, that this will pass hopefully one day and we'll be here to smile on the other side. Um, okay. Yeah, John, I was going to ask you, Jonathan, does anybody want to know anything? Well, yes. Yeah, so we have an audience question. We, we have some fans out there. So and let's go with Charlie, Aaron, and then Monroe in kind of this order, because I think this question is really geared for, for, for uh, the restaurants first, but kind of looking into the future, because obviously, you know, is, is entrepreneurs and restaurateurs, you have to do that. And now that it's COVID, you know, talk about your enhanced curbside pickup in your delivery services kind of once things begin to normalize, you know, are there new business opportunities there? You know, Charles, you kind of hinted at that a little bit and that's what John and Roland Park was wondering. Well, we've, we never, we had never promoted curbside and because of the systems that we put in place, you know, that's how we could survive. We immediately got up and got the platform built and we started doing it. And for the, and all of a sudden, People were now getting food from us and we started hearing our food was, um, they saw value. They said it, it held up and presented extremely well. We learned what they needed and we just, 
we're with an organization called Toast, and it's just very intuitive, and we can change something on a dime. Um, so yeah, what's happened is somebody called the other day and said, can we pick this up? And it takes literally 30 seconds for us to go into our online back, the back um, computer, make a change for them specifically and put it back up for them. We have, it's a certain revenue stream that we have planned for in the next 36 months. We are exceeding that number, which I'm grateful of. It is a discounted cost as opposed to obviously eating in this restaurant. It wouldn't be fair to charge the same money when we don't. But there's some things that don't carry well. French fries don't carry well, obviously. Um, moving forward, we're not in the delivery business. I don't want to be, I don't want, I can't go there with CDC and everything else that we're doing so well in this restaurant. I can't have somebody touching our food. So we do not do that. People, but it's seamless. They just either, we either get them a text, we either, or they either call us and we know what car is coming up front. We have cameras, we're, our front doors have glass doors to them. They're in and out and they're gone. The payment's already made. Um, and it's the relationship is built. So right. for us, it's always been relationships. And now everything that we do, you know, yes, the CDC guidelines, the six foot rule, which by the way, is a total misnomer. None of us are gonna be at 100% or even 75% now until the day comes the six foot rule is over. We're just lucky that we have so many spaces and so, you know, between small and private and fireplace and outside, people can roll with it. But um, moving forward, we are a high-end restaurant with, um, that provides individualized service for tables of two, for tables of 200, or a total buyout. And so we're not changing that. We're just going to, we're expanding. We're expanding during this time all of our services, and I know it sounds crazy, but this is our time to be recognized, to be seen. Um, they're never going to forget those small parties, and they're not going to. They're not going to listen. If somebody just comes and gets our chocolate macadamia that they love, and they only want one thing, they got it. Great. So, you know, for us, we're different. Um, I'm really, by the way, happy that Fulton and Howard County has gotten great corned beef sandwiches and great. Jewish deli because um, it's needed. And I also, because I'm, I might not have the time later, I'm just happy to see my, my friend Monroe. He has worked passionately in this industry for so many different years. And unlike maybe other businesses or, or, or endeavors, we are friends. We're, we're in different portions of our industries, but we look out for each other, we care. Monroe has spent more time in this industry taking care of the industry and not being self-service to himself. And I know that. And I just, I've never told him, and since it's public, I really want to know he's a mesh beyond belief. Super, thank you, Charlie. So Aaron, can I get a corned beef sandwich to go? If I don't want to, how does that work right now? Absolutely, I mean, 70% of our business is carry out right now. So that's a majority of our business. We have curbside, we're going to be doing delivery. So most of the business right now it is carry out. Um, and so corned beef all day, you, you will we'll be more than happy to do, uh, to go, to go for you. Wonderful. Super. In, in Monroe, obviously your model is very different, but, but if, if I wanted to get a family Shabbos meal from you, um, on the kosher side, could I do that? You can do that with a couple days notice. We're of course not prepared for short order and we can't be, um, and yes, when we've had pickups, we've had them paid in advance. We have a car drive to our side entrance. They open the trunk and we put it in carefully. When it's something to be reheated, we leave heating instructions. Um, but we don't have the same challenge of short order for uh, a, a, as if it were a restaurant. So let me follow up with that for a minute, Monroe. So you would, though, with notice, I guess because earlier when you were speaking of the events where you're doing packed meals so that everyone can get a dinner delivered, uh, is there a minimum was what my you know, question was for how many people you'd need to do for that kind of a... Uh, it just becomes very expensive to make a very small order. That, that's all I can say. Um, it can be uh, uh, offensively expensive if someone just wants us to make an, an order for two or four out of the blue. 
Um, on Rosh Hashanah, we did prepare some real small orders for this that were picked up at a synagogue and they were, uh, everyone was getting the same meal, but they were coming in and picking up their own orders. That made sense. Um, it, it is hard for us to make us a small order uh, on, sh on short notice for a family. But yes, anybody calls, I'll de describe it, I'll offer menus, I'll give a price and hopefully we can help them, of course. I have another question if Jonathan, do you yeah. have any more from the no, crowd? Yeah. So um, we talk about, you met, have all mentioned masks, you've all and mentioned safety. I I'm wondering how that's sort of being enforced. I know it's difficult sometimes. And so I wanna ask each of you to just quickly touch on that. When someone comes into your restaurant or when you are catering an event, are you the ultimate policeman for how people are obeying social distancing, mask rules, whatever the case may be. And well, Monroe, I'd love to Monroe I'm jumping right into you. I'd love to respond to that. Uh, well, we, it's very clear to our staff that they have to wear the mask and, and be correct. Um, and that's not been a problem at all uh, since this started. Uh, we insist that a guest, when he comes through uh, a buffet and we are preparing their plate and handing it to them, that they are masked. But please realize they return to their table and they remove mask and they are eating and drinking. Um, there's no doubt that over time at an event, especially when adult beverages are involved, that uh, the uh, masking takes a hit. And of course, later in the evening when we're cutting up a wedding cake and distributing, and we have worked out a system for cutting the cake and then having two staff in front of that table, then handing out the various flavor cakes as guests approach with a fork. But uh, we want them to come back to that uh, dessert buffet also masked. Um, and it is hard to be the policeman. I will admit it's hard to be the policeman. I was involved in one wedding where the family was so conscientious about setting up the seating and having the correct amount of people and having them organized by family units. And of course, a couple of jerks bring their chairs to make nine people at this table because they wanted to be seated that way. Um, and honestly, I'm concerned about my staff and their health. And while we are masked, they have to go bust those tables where they're overcrowded and unmasked. It's not perfect. No, well, cause we, cause the crowd's not perfect. Aaron, how about you? Anybody demanding service without a mask or appropriate social distancing? And we have no tolerance policy. I mean, you gotta follow all the CDC guidelines. I mean, if you're, if it's even remotely, even this, this much down, mm -hmm. you gotta, you gotta follow all the rules. Gloves, masks, we have sanitizers everywhere i mean we wipe down all the all the machines um you know it, and it's a big expense to have all these supplies and go through it i mean you're you're replacing gloves every other minute and uh once you're using the cat you know grabbing bakery switching this cutting deli meat i mean there's so much involved but the the, the customer has to feel comfortable when going into an establishment and we're touching their food so, you know, we have, they, they, our employees know there's no tolerance. We, they, they have to wear um, the gloves, the masks, and follow all the guidelines. Charles, I see you've masked up to be, to be our model for this last segment. Um, happy, ha if, happy Halloween. <laughs> so okay, tell, listen, us how things are, tell us how things are at Citron. Do people who are coming into the restaurant need a mask until they are seated? How does it work? Well, again, just so you know, even though we've done the HVAC systems and, and it's all that, we don't go above six at a table regardless if it's down there or not. There's no movement. Every party, there's twos and fours, but the reason why this is on is we have those big glass doors. If we see them, first of all, there's more staff because we have staff that's watching more everywhere we are. When we opened up hand sanitizers on every table, we did all this because we had to control. First of all, there's COVID police. I don't know in Howard County, but the you know, COVID health department has been here. It's a separate department, the COVID fire department, and overall Baltimore County. And we passed with flying colors 
we see them every two to three weeks. And it has nothing to do with normal compliance. So the reason why this is on is that we have to wear it all the time. When we are at that front door and somebody is starting to even get close with no mask, we're going like this, like this, we're doing all that. By the way, this great mask was made by Ella Pritzker and my wife Susan represents making these for major companies. They're incredible. It's called Face It With Style, but that's my commercial. Beyond that, <laughs> it's just very, Beth, we're going to have a 70th birthday cake for you, so you better get here since we're safe. When you're <laughs> but the truth no, is, we're not, the truth I'm is, probably not going to get there until I'm 71. <laughs> oh, come on. But anyway, listen, um, you know, look, I can't afford to go down. I can't afford for there to be a mistake. Um, and we can't. So we, um, we, they know from a website, they know when they make a reservation. Because remember, we're now making them go through some steps because we've done multiple steps. And yes, we're education. And yes, we have signage everywhere. Yes, we, we are doing everything we can. And there really has been, it was maybe one person refused the temperature check and the person uh, was not allowed in the restaurant. And the person walked away with the five or five people with them, but it was what it was. This is very serious, but we want to stay, we're in the hospitality business. So this has made us be, this has made me learn what a restaurant really needs to be. And in the future, this is what it is. So whether it's COVID, whether it's something else someday, whatever it were to be, we're in an industry, we better be smart enough to know how to do it, get past it and keep going. And that's what we're doing. Hey Beth. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jonathan. Yes. As, as we begin to wrap up, I think it's really important that, that in the last minute or two, we hear from our three guests how the customers, the community can order from them, make reservations. Do we go to the website? Do we call you? What's the best way to do it? So let's. let's okay, so, what that, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're just going to go around. On, on, on my screen, the First person I see is Aaron. So Aaron, this is your chance for your commercial to give us contact information, maybe the address for people, our Howard County people, or somebody who might want to take a drive. Absolutely. So um, just give us a call um, or go on our website in, and uh, you could order. We have online ordering there, but uh, or come in 8191 Maple Lawn Boulevard. If you've ever been out to Maple on it's a planned community in Howard County. So it's houses and then there's restaurants. We're right near Libs Grill. Um, and uh, you know, we, we do have uh, seating inside. Like I said, most of it is uh, is uh, uh, takeout. Uh, but we have amazing, amazing food, corned beef sandwiches, pastrami. Uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the sandwiches are huge, almost a pound of meat. Um, we have breakfast served all day, but it is authentic, authentic New York style deli, just like Katz's, Stage, Carnegie, all of that. Everything is, I mean, the bakery goods are homemade. Everything is over the top. So we can't, uh, we can hardly even tell that you're passionate about it. <laughs> but th thanks, Aaron. So that's, so that's Mikey and Mel's and Monroe, tell us how to contact you and what we can expect. Well, of course, we're not looking for, we, we can't really advertise a, a quick restaurant meal. Um, our website is, of course, www.zeffertandgold.com. And we have a lot of menus online, but really you do your best to plan an event or a meal by uh, calling one of our planners. My, I'm happy to take the call myself and, and describe either a, a, a regular meal or a, a, a kosher, kosher event. Our kosher division is Celebrations Kosher Catering. But the website at Zephyr and Gold would prove very helpful. Thank you. And Charles? Well, you're looking at the lake because in the, all this time, I didn't tell you, 40 acres and it's gorgeous out there. It really is, and it's year round. It's lit, it's beautiful. We have seven event spaces along with a total buyout doing obviously at what you've heard, everything right and then some. We're more elevated than we were. Citron Baltimore is the website. Um, right at the top on the right is for curbside carryout. You can also go through Toast, which is wonderful on our end or your end. Making reservations, it's open table. 
Or obviously, I don't care if it's two people, somebody calls, it's a live person that's gonna answer that phone and we're gonna to respond to you and go through all your concerns and all the time for every individual reservation because of where we are today and what somebody's comfort level is and they want to know how they're getting in the building and where they park and everything. We're one mile off the Beltway Green Spring with a gorgeous lake. And um, um, I'm just trying to think of anything else. Um, we're just, um, we're blown away by um, the people we've met and the fact that there's so many people from so many different areas that have come. So Citron Baltimore, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Charles Monroe and Aaron. Thanks for being here today. And we wish you just the best luck um, in the, as things get colder, as people start coming inside. And um, I hope everyone will feel safe and calm. And I just hope things continue to get better. I also wanna let our um, watchers and listeners know that Pearlstone, which is an associated agency, also does offer kosher certified organic farm to table meals and they do deliver to your home. So go to pearlstonecenter.org if you wanna place an order. I know they're limited. I know for instance, like Shabbos dinners, they fill up quickly. So, uh, you know, plan ahead and, and give them a shout and a try as well. Next Tuesday is what? Election day. And we're gonna take a break. There will be no upside. So you have no excuse if you haven't already voted to go and vote. We will return on Tuesday, November 10th. So in the meantime, again, remember to do your civic duty and go to associated.org and jmoreliving.com for more information, stories and resources and sign up for the weekly newsletter. And until next time in two weeks, I hope everyone stays well.